So uh, we are going to now confirm, as I said, uh, we are going to confirm our, our clone, uh, what we just said. The confirmation of the spike clone. We went through all this plasmid isolation, uh, alkaline lysis method we used, and eventually we had uh, the pur purified plasmid. And I said we, we are going to confirm our, and we confirm our plasmids or our clones using the restriction digestion methods. Now, if you remember, uh, we cloned our plasmid in, in the zero blood vector. And this vector was, I think I wrote 3.9 kb, okay, uh, was the size of the vector. Uh, our potential clone is, you know, uh, the spike gene, 2.5 kb was the size we assumed, let's assume, and it has, you know, these, uh, uh, we also added eco R1 sites and XBA1 sites. Uh, this vector, zero blood vector, has its own restriction sites as well on both sides. You can choose, uh, when you perform a, a restriction digestion analysis, it's up to you. You can choose uh, restriction enzymes of your own choice, but whenever you choose, you should predict uh, the expected fragments, which are going to be generated after restriction digestion reaction. So for example, if there are no EQR1 and XP1 sites in the whole vector, and these are unique, they are just present in, in our insert. Uh, so after digestion, uh, you should expect two fragments only. So XPA1 will cut here, equal one will cut here, and one fragment will be, you know, this whole vector, which is of 3.9 kb. So one expected fragment you will see of 3.9 kb. The other fragment will be uh, your spike gene, which is uh, 2.5 kb. These are the expected fragments based on if you use EQR1 and XP1. Let's say you use an enzyme uh, XPA and EQR1, but EQR1 also cuts here. Okay? So how many fragments do you expect? You expect a fragment going from here to here, a fragment going from here to here, and fragment this one. So three fragments and you should again say okay 2.5 kb in that case if equal one is cutting here I'm giving you you know ideas about uh, generating and we call this restriction map map of the plasmid uh, map uh, with precise position in terms of nucleotide numbers where an enzyme is cutting and based on the restriction map you will very easily say, okay, in this case, if I have an equal one side here as well, I'll have, you know, one fragment of this size, the other this one, and then 2.5 kb. So let's say there is only one equal one side, which is within our insert. So we use now... purified plasmid from here after measuring the concentration of this plasmid we measure the concentration using spectral photometer okay and you, we use let's say in a restriction digestion reaction we use uh, the plasmid DNA which we purified, let's say we used uh, X microliter which is equivalent to after measuring the concentration let's say we used one microgram. The restriction enzymes they uh, use calcium and magnesium because these are DNAs, uh, uh, endonucleases, uh, so they use uh, magnesium ions, uh, they require magnesium ions to perform their function. So we use specific buffer uh, and each restriction enzyme has very specific uh, um, uh, enzymatic conditions in the liquid which are required for digestion of the DNA. So we use this buffer 
And normally these buffers come in 10x concentration and we make 2x because the total volume is, uh, we have to have 20 microliter total volume. Then we have uh, equal one. We use one microliter, we use XPA1, one microliter, and we make uh, finally water uh, to Y microliter to make it total 20 microliter. We incubate this reaction at 37 degrees Celsius for one hour. I would advise you to go and read why I have used one microliter of restriction enzyme. Why I'm not using three microliter. Okay? So you should read what it means, what one unit of a restriction enzyme means. Think of this as a question. Think of this as, a, uh, as, a, as an assignment. Why I'm using only one microliter? Can I use three microliters in a reaction, total reaction of third, uh, 20 microliter? If the total reaction is 20 microliter, can I use three microliter of restriction enzyme of EQR1 and three of XPA1? So that's an assignment question. Also go and read why I'm using one. Can I use 0.5 microliter of restriction enzyme when I'm using one microgram? Because the units of enzymes which are going to be used for restriction digestion and the time given when you will read, you will find the real answer. Okay. So after 37, uh, incubation at 37 degrees Celsius for one hour, what we do, we run agarose gel electrophoresis. Okay. So remember we started, I said I used to do six uh, mini preps. Uh, so that's why I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, first layer is of marker, okay, and here we have markers. Uh, yeah, let, let's change the lanes and we'll soon see why I'm increasing the number of lanes. You will realize that. Okay. So, after restriction digestion, after one hour, digesting our purified plasmid uh, with EQI1 and XPA1, we perform uh, agarose electrophoresis, gel electrophoresis. Uh, you must have seen the video uh, where you know uh, how the agarose gel is prepared. So, we load each sample. Uh, let's say this is our so the first lane is U U means uncut plasmid, purified plasmid without restriction digestion and the second one is cut Uncut, cut, uncut, cut, uncut, same. Let's say this is mini prep one, plasmid two, three, four, five, and six. Uncut, cut. And just for clarity, I will, you know, have yellow colors for all the uncuts. Let's say we have So let's say all the uncuts are like this and our uh, 
This is the uh, letter DNA marker. 500 base pair, 1 KB, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 4, 5, and so on, kilobases. And the digested one, the six digested ones, which we digested, so let's say we have digested with EQ1 and XP1. So now you should guess, and I will take a pause a few seconds. You should guess which ones are your clones. These are all the uncuts. And you should think about also, so first you should think about which ones are your clone. So one, uncut cut, two, uncut cut, third, uncut and cut. So uncut is acting as a control for its digested product. Fourth, uncut and cut. Fifth plasmid uncut and cut, and sixth plasmid uncut and cut. So, first thing is which ones are your clones in which you have successfully cloned spike gene? Second, you should think about why the uncut, which is bigger than the cut. Because, you know, if you are able to guess which one is your clone, uh, you know, the, the uncut, if you have 3.9 kb vector plus 2.5 kb, so it, it's nearly, so 6.4 kb plasma together with insert. And this should run faster than your, because the size is bigger. It's not digested. Why it is you know, moving next to, let's say, 2 kb as compared to digestive product. So you should guess, and I take, let's say, five minutes pause. And, uh, not five minutes, did I say five minutes? Five seconds, let's say, 10 seconds. And then we talk about answer to both these questions. So, you were able to guess? I'm sure <clears throat> many of you must have rightly guessed. So, these are your clones. Number one is your clone because you digested with E. coli 1 and XPA 1. So, you expected two bands, 3.9 and 2.5. So, near 4 kb is the 3.9 fragment, and near, uh, you know, 2.5, you have the spike insert, 2.5 kb. Same is the case in the second clone, you have the vector fragment, which is, you know, 3.9 kb, and you have the insert. However, the third plasmid, or third uh, mini prep DNA is not cloned, it is only vector alone, and it does happen many times in our cloning, that you have only vector alone without any insert. So 3.9 kb is there, but there is no insert. The colony 4 or the plasmid or mini prep DNA from uh, plasmid 4 is again showing no presence of insert, vector alone. 5 is again your clone. Spike is successfully cloned. 6 is again not your clone. So the ones who guessed like this, uh, they were right. Now, answer to the other question that you have the uncut DNA, which is basically we said if this is 3.9 kb plus 2.5 kb 
okay, which together makes like 6.4 KB, this, and this is 3.9 KB. So this 6.4 KB should be running somewhere there. It should be running bigger than this linear molecule. And this is the catch. I'm saying linear molecule. This is not linear. This is circular molecule. And whenever you run a uh, plasmid prep purified plasmid DNA, I tell you the best ones are which show you very thick band right here ahead of all the other bands and very light, very, very light other bands. So this very thick, uh, strong, uh, intense band here is showing actually super coiled plasmid. This one is, you know, open circular and relaxed circular, you know, they are not super coiled. So when a plasmid or DNA is circular and when you run it, on the agarose gel, you, you remember agarose gel is just like, you know, spaghetti. okay? There are pores, pore sizes due to jelly formed by, by this agarose uh, particles. Now, the circular molecule, it runs much faster through the, uh, through these uh, pores in the agarose gel as compared to linear molecule. Linear, mo imagine you have a table tennis ball and you have a snake. Snake is the linear molecule and table tennis ball is the small or a bead, round bead. Uh, so snake will take while passing through this zigzag, you know, it has to go like this to go through these pores of agarose gel. And the round molecule, it is going to be very fast. Okay. It's super quiet. It's, it's, it's much more, you know, compact. Uh, and since your markers, DNA markers, this letter, these are linear molecules. That's why this is not the right indicator for circular molecule. Circular is anyway going to run ahead of the linear molecules. So this is, we use linear letter for looking at our expected fragments. So this is uh, all about, you know, uh, <clears throat> we started with the question that we were interested in uh, molecular cloning of spike gene of coronavirus. Uh, we cloned it in general purpose cloning vector. Uh, we confirmed our uh, clone gene in this vector uh, using restriction digestion. Remember the steps we went through? We first made uh, cDNA of the <coughs> viral <coughs> genome using reverse transcription. Uh, from this cDNA, we amplified the spike gene using spike-specific primers. Uh, we incorporated some restriction sites in the primers as well. Remember, designing primer is very, very important. So you should also go and watch the uh, uh, PCR lecture, the lecture about PCR, a general PCR, which I gave. So after amplifying spike, we cloned it in a general purpose cloning vector. Uh, and but we did design before we started the whole cloning strategy. We did decide that okay, we will have EQR1 and XP1 uh, integrated in our spike gene without disturbing the open reading frame. Eventually, when we are going to subclone, when we are going to lift this one from this into bacterial expression vector. So once this clone is confirmed in general purpose cloning vector, we send.